We are living in a culture where everything is kind of borrowed and remixed and uh, reposted. And um, you see it in fashion, you know, um, everything comes in waves. Jeans are skinny, then suddenly they're baggy again. But we've seen it all before in the past. And, um, and people also just take things without asking and make it their own, you know. Uh, Virgil Abloh is a good example. Who He does it in fashion. He just takes an image of the Mona Lisa, prints it on his t-shirt, writes off-white underneath it, and, and then it's his. I think nowadays it happens so much that people are not really um, that shocked by it anymore. It's more accepted. It still remains a an interesting topic to, to talk about, also in art, because I ask the question, is it mine if I add yellow? And I'm not sure yet if, if it is mine or not. It's difficult, uh, and I think I'll never fully be able to answer the, the question. I do think the original creator deserves acknowledgement. Even if you don't credit the person, it's, you still have to keep in mind there was an original source, an original creator. And I often use the Add Yellow project to create a sort of homage to artists that I love and look up to. So if I add yellow to a Picasso, it's not saying, hey Picasso, your work belongs to me. It's me saying, hey, I want to give my own contemporary spin to art that I love. Yellow seemed to be quite suitable. It's a very eye-catching color. It's, it immediately draws your eye. And it also, it doesn't have as much meaning connected to it as other colors. For example, if I took black, you know, that's quite a, a dark kind of gloomy color, or red, that's uh, for danger or passion. But yellow is a bit more neutral, you know? You do think of things like sunshine or something, but, uh, but yellow doesn't have that much meaning, so it allows me to, to give my own meaning with that color. My relationship with art is one of um, beauty, of conveying positive emotions. I, I respect and I like looking at serious and deep art, but for for myself, making art is a sort of therapy. So um, when I'm not feeling too good or something, I make art and it brightens up my day. And that's what I want to transfer to the observer as well. So when someone looks at my art, I want to carry carry over that that those positive vibes. I, I don't think I'm going to change the world with my art, but I would like to brighten up some days. I had this idea of maybe starting my own street art project. Uh, I thought it would be cool to add big fields of yellow over billboards and, and street signs and things. I think when I was young, I would have, well, I'm still kind of young, but uh, when I was younger, that would have been a cool project to, to do and go out into the streets and add yellow to everything. But I think nowadays, um, I'm a bit more careful. I don't want to get arrested. <laughs> It would be a cool idea to, to have these yellow stickers and hand them out to people and they would go into the streets all over the world and add yellow to everything and it's a very recognizable thing and uh, that would be pretty cool. Especially with Instagram, maybe have a hashtag and then see where all over the world people have added yellow. That would be a, a nice project. Nowadays we are surrounded by screens, our phone screens, um, computer screens, mass-produced things. It's all very quick, very temporary, you know. You, you use something once and then you throw it away and it's very, uh, it's quite overwhelming. And recently I think people have kind of started more of a counter-movement of going back to nicely produced materials, to listening to records as opposed to only digital music. People have started buying records again and buying vintage clothes and people like quality things and it's often old things that are connected with nostalgia as well. For example, collages, I use old books and it makes me engage with the material and with the history of that object. Also in things like clothing, People would rather buy one very special article of clothing instead of 20 cheap 
t-shirts or something, you know. People don't want that much mass anymore. So now it's more about quality rather than quantity. And that's very much connected to our fast digital lifestyles, I think, to kind of balance that out. The idea of taking pages from Hitler's controversial book, Mein Kampf, came from a shop in Amsterdam that still sells this book. It was this shop that sells propaganda memorabilia, so from the Soviet times and from the Nazi era. And I, I thought, I kind of found it interesting, also being German, to get my hands on this book and uh, to make something beautiful out of something so ugly. And then I thought, okay, Hitler and the Nazis, they hated modern art. So how can I uh, kind of stick it to them? How can I do my thing and say, hey, you know, uh, I'm, we're not going to stand for this kind of uh, hatred and prejudice anymore, so I'm going to take modern art or, or yeah, contemporary art and stick it quite literally to the pages to kind of disarm the, the hate-filled words of, of Hitler. Matisse, he's, he's always been an inspiration of mine. I love his paintings, but especially his cutouts, just the simplicity of it, you know, I like that it's not too concerned with the real representation of things. A memorable episode regarding one of my artworks. Um, I can't get into too much details now, but there was an, an episode a year ago where a company had uh, copied my Ad Yellow style of, of art for one of their commercial campaigns. And that was very ironic because for the Add Yellow project, you know, I take other people's work and I add my yellow to it. And I often don't ask for permission to use other people's work. And then when a company used my Add Yellow for their commercial work, it was very, you know, I wasn't happy about it. But on the other hand, that's what the whole project is about. So it was, uh, that was an interesting episode. <laughs> So both Cologne, where I'm from in Germany, uh, and Amsterdam, where I've lived for eight years now, are very great cities to, to be in as an artist. You know, there's always, there's inspiration and beauty around every corner. You've got nice museums, you've got beautiful buildings, friendly, nice people, and also parks where you can get away, get a bit inspired. I really like cities with a lot of history where you can, uh, for example, in Amsterdam, when I cycle through the city, even that can give me inspiration for an artwork. So uh, being in Amsterdam is, is, is perfect for me right now. When I collaborate with a, uh, with a brand or a company, it has to feel like a natural fit, like um, aesthetically and what the company stands for, what the company does, it has to just feel good. First of all, the collaboration with Mute Muse was very interesting because I had to design these straps and this was a format that I had never worked in before. And I like it when collaborations challenge me to try new things and work in ways that I haven't worked in before. And I think the end result is really, is really nice, so I'm happy with that. It was exciting at first. Uh, because now for the first time my work has been printed onto, onto leather. At first I thought, is this possible? Is it going to work? But then I started seeing the results and I, I thought, wow, this, this looks great. This collaboration with Mute Muse has been uh, perfect so far. I mean, the natural way in which it, it, in which it worked, I could, I could make artworks that complement the, the aesthetics and the products of the brand and also the products complement my own art, if you know what I mean, it's a two-way thing. I like quality things, so things that have been well produced, things, I like nice materials, attention to detail, and I feel that Mute Muse is a brand that really has that as a, as a main focus, just producing good quality, nice things, and that's something that I really like being associated with. So that's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a perfect, symbiosis of art and fashion that for me worked really well.